is how Gothix is actually going to be able to take the stocks away because at some point you've got to engage with the snake main. You, you've got to be up there in close quarters to take the stock away. And I think anyone with any experience fighting snake knows that you do not want to be fighting up close and personal with snake when he's got moves like grenades that he can just D-drop. He's got obviously C4 that they can just latch onto at a moment's notice. Uh, even moves like up smash and stuff like that are scary things to deal with. And especially like moves like the up tilt, which is like the bread and butter kill move. This is sort of what I was thinking now because it's, it's gotten to the point where in this matchup where you, you have to sort of approach as Sonic. You're not really as comfortable as before where you can just really hold back and sort of, you know, even if the character's got one or two projectiles, you don't really have to commit yourself to approaching all too much. But in the case of Snake, the key thing is Bob Bargey. It's so much utility on his end that I feel like Sonic is kind of forced to approach in a lot of, a lot of um, aspects here. 150% onto Gothix right now, but he, it's, he's still not dead just yet. These up tilts haven't hit their mark. That's the thing. I mean, like, again, you can see like Gothix trying to approach here, but obviously, equally, Harper has not actually been able to take this stock just yet. They are just trading hits, which, in their sort of percentage, actually, at this point, almost works in Gothix's favor. Because Harper needs to be trying to find this stock right now, but Gothix. Here is you know, because he's playing just keep away right now, it's making it quite difficult. Maneuvering round at some point, but of course, that's what we need. You get in, as what we talked about right at the start of the set, Rebecca, where as soon as Gubbins gets in, of course, you've got to deal with moves like the up tilt, and that's exactly what happened. Met by the you know, the, the stanky leg of their court, take the stock away. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And the C4s on the platform again, Harper, you know, he, he's, he's chilling out here, man, because he knows he's got a stock lead. He doesn't have anything here uh, while Gothic has to approach in every you know part of this um, this uh, stop right now 51 percent percent rising yeah, again I mean like every trade now that happens between these two is literally only gonna work in Harper's favor Gothic needs to try and find a skill love the air dodge pass the up smash there just avoid it entirely but again you can see he's really trying to find his skill but now Harper is the one playing the keyboard but finally big hit lands Harper takes it, uh, sorry, Guffix takes the stock away from Harper. Definitely, and you know, if Guffix can get something going right now, like you said, if, if Sonic's able to find one or two hits and start without any interruption, he might be able to build big damage like this. All them got on the platform. Look at that, oh, but the grenade. Once again, just bailing out Snake here. It's every single trade, Becca. Like, it's so tough for Guffix right now. As soon as you're at a damage deficit, it is really tough to deal with because. Every character trades with Snake. That's the inherent nature of this matchup. You know, grenades are an important factor. But when you're at deficit, obviously that means you're just taking more and more damage constantly. And then you'll be at the risk of the big moves like that up tilt constantly. We're basically just seeing a repeat of stock one. Yeah, and I feel like this is why we see Snake so prominent in today's match as well. I feel like he's got a good matchup going into Sonic and Steve. Not completely winning per se, but definitely a very doable matchup. And a very, you know, I feel like at this level of play, a very easy condition to play to as well. Yeah. This is the thing. I mean, like, obviously, right now, Harper is going to be hunting for the kill here. Guffix again trying to keep away. I do like the use of the spin dashes there. Maybe a little preemptive on the forward smash there. But. Yes, I mean, we need these kind of things from Guffix right now, who's still hanging on right now. And again, what we said about like the spin dash, about how you can just like charge in suddenly before Harper even gets a chance to drop a grenade, I think is pivotal right now. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of patience from our Guffix, and it's paying off. Narrowly misses the up air. Hold on, the down throw up air is going to kill out 2 1 4. But I can't lie, Guffix has made quite a comeback already. Yeah, I mean, this was looking pretty disastrous initially, but Guffix has made it all the way back here. Just needs to find that one big hit here to take the stock away before too much damage is put on. Grenade actually a little bit interrupting the full hit at the back air, but Guffix doesn't care as he dives up there and takes the stock away. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stop from Guffix there. And there we go. Once again, he's, he's navigating around with this spin dash again. Ooh, Ed is in that multi, multi funnel, that one there, 48%. And I wonder if we can still be seeing that some of patient gameplay you saw at the end of that second stock here. So I really feel that's what netted in that stock and it's Harper. But hold on, the percent just keeps rising, 90%. It's Harper gonna let him live always at 200 percent again. Uh, I can't let it'll be very, very bad if he does. Yeah, I mean again, this is now where it's so important for Guffix just to really find some proper hits here because Arthur, again, 
will just keep trading hits and keep taking that damage up. That's a big back air from Guffix, so for the Sonic, Yoyi slowly giant making this comeback happen. But again, Harper now just in a position where he can just wait out, wait for that up till, wait for the opportunity. Nikita comes out as well. That'll be a stock as well. There was so many you know, points in this match now where Harper will be able to take the kill, and Guffix has to be so careful. Very careful indeed, but once he gets it, I feel like most of the damage you see Harper doing is from those from those uh, grenades, right? And obviously grenades aren't gonna kill for like 200 percent Oh, that wasn't wow. trying to go high to, to punish the oh, recovery! Uh, the dash attack is gonna catch Gothic landing, but that was a close game one. Extreme oh, god, that up air literally is like inches away from being able to take that uh stock and you know and the game away from Harper, but still holding on firm and again. So that's what we're talking about, like where you're just training so much damage, you're taking so much damage, you just become at risk of moves like that, that dash tag, which obviously is a potent killing tool, Rekka, so it's tough. Extreme and extremely potent killing tool, indeed smart, but yeah, no, I feel like Gothics will start getting that, I feel like at the start, sort of, you know, you're being caught in the wind a little bit, Harper uh, really did get the head start on him, I'd say, but eventually, I think you start seeing Gothics you know, adapt a lot more to Harper's style and um, Harper's style of play, seeing actually a lot more patience being utilised here to, you know, wait for these ex these explosions to happen before approaching, you know, and I feel like just that little bit of patience puts in so much work as we saw, because even with all that, even with that all that deficit that he accrued over the set, Gothics constantly managed to make it back every set. Single time. No, well, we are going to a very interesting stage here, folks. We are seeing Lila Cruz come out, something that we're not too familiar with because we do not have it on our walls there, but certainly is a very loved uh, stage in France and part of all set here. So, it will be really interesting to see how both players adapt to it. And I mean, Gothic's chose this as well, which is the interesting thing. Yeah, that's the, that's the funniest thing. Yeah, no, you know, like you mentioned, it's really on the European rule set. So Gothic, you know, the UK player, didn't uh, chose it. It's the one I ended up choosing, which is, which is very interesting. I mean, I feel like it's um, definitely a tribute to the fact that you've got a lot of space to move around with, and it might hinder, you know, some of this C4 placement as well, because obviously Sonic can just easily move between the platforms, just like that. So it depends, but maybe half has got experience on this. I would say already we're starting to see like a slightly kind of like shift in momentum here. Like all this like knowledge I think Guffing's learned from the previous game is really coming out full force there. Now they're avoiding that tilt though. Huge back air lands. I mean on Lila Cruz, especially of all stages, that was like next time the lands has taken the stock. Oh something like that. Forward tilt there. Really nice from the Sonic main. Two for one for one, also percent there. Still so much rage on line here. I've got to consider, man, Lila Cruz's um, sides are very, the blast zones, man. Yeah. Very, very small. Very, very small as well. He will die in, 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 in a matter of hits in a lot of instances. And still, even Steven basically on the ball right now. Two stops at least on both sides now. So, I mean, obviously both these players are even centuries right now. Just reset back to a neutral position, trying to get something going. It's Gothix that lands the first here. I love the use of the uh, the spin charge as well. Like, there's the, you know, just do the, the homing attack to kind of like stall out initially. See, you know, almost like trick Harper. And suddenly, out of nowhere, all this damage has just come out from Gothix right now, who takes a very That's early all? lead. That is insane, the end coming off of Gothic 7. This guy knows how to kill people for sure, and he, <laughs> and he pretends, he, pretends he's a nice guy, but he, inside he, he's a demon. It, that, it's actually his That, that was brutal, man. That pawn off the SD is insane work. Come on, Gothic 7. Hey, if it gets in the win, it gets in the win. But hold on, it could part be the Harper that much needed rage boost, man, to probably take his revenge. And again, the really interesting thing now, Eka, is like we were talking about like how they were both trading his before, thanks for grenades. Every trade now works in Gotham's favor. He does not mind this. He can actually play a close quarters game and not really risk it. Obviously, the only thing you need to be careful oh, of is the up tilt yep. that I was about to say, and then it happens. Hold on, he's off stage now, though, and 64% after having a whole stock to move like that mm. from that SD. Ain't too much, man. I feel like it can come, uh, you know, it can even out very, very quickly. So, Harper, man, I feel like he might have gotten that rage boost from that Atom, bro. I can't lie. Yeah, let's not see a tour to get bored of Gothics. Come on, you've got to take this game away because Harper is starting to make this comeback happen. Snake as a character is so, is so possible to make happen out of nowhere. I mean, literally, again, every single time that C4 explodes, every time a grenade blows up, just the whole battlefield being on fire, it's really tough to maneuver around. And Gothics, you can see, is actually a little bit struggling 
to kind of find a way through because every single time it seems he like steps foot onto the stage, he just blows up. You know I'm saying, I'm telling you right now, Smart Bro, it's evening out, man, and I don't want to see my man on a heat smash uh, kit. I don't want to see, I can see the cards. Oh no. Right? Oh! That Sonic deserves that after part of the game body, bro. I'm, I'm starting to see already. I hope, I hope that ain't the future that I'm seeing here. But still, Harper, neck and neck right now, back though. Still not enough, but we are going to dive out there. Goes high as well with the up there, but still not enough. Harper hanging on here. But again, we're going down to these final sort of few moments of the game here. Harper has made this comeback happen all the way from such an early stock loss. And now, Guffix has just got to try and hunt to find this final kill. But has got to deal with so many projectiles, so many grenades, so many C4s. Literally hovering all over the battlefield while Harper just plays this key boy game. Yeah, and obviously, you know, Guffix, he's stalling a little bit here. But you can only stall for so long with all those grenades eventually end up hitting you. And suddenly, now, Guffix, even after that stop lead, is at a deficit. Hold on, Harper, oh. getting really scrappy here. C4 explosion. And that's unfortunate for Gothics. He'll be seeing the loser's side of the bracket 2-0 to Big Man Harper. I feel like that Yeet Smash clip is going to eventually happen, bro. <laughs> RIP to Gothics. I RIP, RIP. Yeah, I mean, no, you know, you know Yeet Smash is watching as well. I mean, it's, it's tough because, like, as we say, even with, like, a lead like that, Snake just, like, suddenly just, like, shifts it around anyway. And, like, every single trade, every single interaction, every moment, it just becomes tougher and tougher for Guffins to make that comeback happen.